Eddie Howe's shithousery mags are well and truly back. They have just beaten Russell Martin's Southampton by a goal to nil, and this will be a very, very interesting last word. We've got Sam, we've got Carl, we've got Lee. This might be an entertaining conversation. Welcome back to Newcastle Fans TV. The season has begun with three points. Not really much to talk about. It was a nice, easy 1-0 win at St. James's Park. We'll come to that a little bit later. Sam, the team news. Um, I think that the, the two positions, or maybe three positions, that we were thinking what's going to happen. Who's going to be the two centre-halves? And who's going to be right back? And just Jake and Murphy continue to be the right, the right forward. I think they were the, probably the ones that I was looking at. Yeah. Murphy probably the lesser of the three, but what did you think? No, I thought the only issue was who was going to play right back. And I don't think there was a wrong answer, to be honest. That's the kind of strength and depth we've got there. Tino got the nod today and was superb. There's only two changes, you know, from the last day of the season at Brentford. Look at the new signings, is that what you're trying to say? No, it's just an interesting point, isn't it? That uh, Kraft was right back at uh, Brentford last day last season and uh, Barnes played for Gordon. Those are the only uh, the only two changes as we welcome a familiar face back on. Come on, Matthew. <laughs> Matt, we're just talking about the team news. I'll, I'll, let, I'll let you um, continue just with that, just briefly. Um, were you surprised that it was Burn and Shaw to start with or did you think Lloyd Kelly might have gotten there? Uh, I think Kelly was impressive in the pre-season games that he did play in, um, but Burn... I've much preferred him at centre half than he has been at left back when he's he's just he, he lacks that pace to be at full back but when he's at centre half he just reads the game so well and his, his distribution's where he lacks obviously so having Fabian Scherer alongside him is is exactly what you need for, so, for half an hour for, for half an hour um, but yeah I was happy with the back four I'd much rather see Tino play against a team like that than Trippier obviously he's played an international tournament come back hasn't had a lot of time on the training pitch but really happy with the lineup really glad to see Bruno as captain yeah Bruno Gimmeres as captain Carl which is um slightly surprising because Dan Byrne was in the starting 11 obviously which is, Matt's just talked about there but in terms of the start I'm not going to talk about the Southampton team because again five at the back you know, we, we kind of know Southampton let's be brutally honest got promoted in the playoffs against Leeds on the fine, uh, on the, at Wembley of course but first 10-15 minutes very very scrappy not really much in it if anything Southampton were doing okay they actually got a disallowed goal for offside the warnings the warnings were there Definitely, I, I mentioned there were two wide players, um, especially the Japanese, I'm not sure what his, his surname was. Um, very, very quick, was causing Lewis Hall problems in the first half, hence him getting booked off the back of that. And I said, you know, had he got a bit of more end product about him, it would have been very, very dangerous. And the, so the signs were there, it was quite nervy. Um, and the fact that Bruno was captain, we were talking about him, quite ner like nervous about the fact that he had nobody to calm him down. So uh, him ha him having to be the person that calms the others down. But he did a very, very good job today. Um, but yeah, the, the, the first 15 minutes were definitely nervy. Southampton come here for a result and very nearly could have got one, to be fair. Yeah, possibly they'll even argue that they should have got something from the game today. You look at the stats, but stats don't mean everything. It's about goals and Newcastle win by a goal to nil. Lee, the biggest talking point, Fabian Scher getting sent off for, I'm going to put this in inverted commas, headbutt, because I'm going to let everybody else have their say on it. What is your view on it? Did the referee control the game so it didn't have to get to that stage, or did Fabian Scher fall for the three-card trick? So first of all, Pawson was having a poor game up to that point already. That must be said, and even after, I think the atmosphere, he couldn't control the game. But at that very moment, I didn't quite see, I've seen it back on the replay, but I didn't see why Scher reacted at first. I just seen Brett Emmett Diaz go down like an absolute fucking fairy. He's actually conned. He's bought. He's basically bought Southampton a, a, a lifeline, effectively, because they were not going to come get result yet. They weren't. And he can't do like a fairy. But haven't seen a back at half time. I looked at the replay. Share reacts of obviously Brett Emmett Diaz pushing him out, and, and it's not like Fabian Share get up right. Oh, come on then. And he was like, and then he's he's kind of squared up, and it's not a it's not one of them. It's a. It's a, it's a, it's very, very minimal. Yeah. And then he goes, Ooh, he's flaking all over the place. <sighs> are we, are we getting to the stage? Are we getting to the stage somewhere that we've got like a head butometer? Because I don't, should, if I was the other way round, can't should Brett Emmett Diaz get a yellow card for overreacting? Well, he got a yellow card. He got a yellow card. But do, you, do you think Sam? Are Stop we getting calling him Brett and Diaz anyway. He's from Lancashire. I know. Come right, on, he's not. Lancashire. Lancashire. No, the red, the, now. the red card. He's done him. A, he's done share a kipper because he's 100%. going in. Like I said on the match reaction, and me and Carl had this discussion as well. He's gone in like a boxing weigh in. He's gone in like a head to head, like they're a boxing weigh in, right? Exactly. And and Brereton's done him by going down instead of not 
going in to what, meet him. But this is what I'm talking about: is a head on, like a head butometer, Matt. You know, we're talking about: is this a red card? Is this a red card? Is that a red card? At the end of the day, did the referee make a obvious error? Because that's what VAR will look at. They'll say, actually, do you know what, Craig? We can see that you haven't made an error. It's, stu goals. it's it's stupid by Fabian Cher. Or do you think, actually, do you know what? Let's we, we can see what he's trying to do. Yellow card, play on, don't spoil the game, 11 v 11, carry on. Yeah, obviously, I've not seen a replay of it, but I sit in that corner, so I had a pretty good view of it. And I think it was the only decision the referee got right today, pretty much. I think it, that's a stonewall red card, in my opinion. It, he's moved his head towards the player, and I think, like Sam says, Brenton Diaz knows exactly what he's doing. He's he's started the contact by going at the back of Cher. He knows, he's getting them riled up, he's getting the away fans, got something to cheer, and then Cher stupid decision he's one of the most experienced players on the pitch he should know better he by now he has it in his locker though doesn't he he, he does. does have it in his locker he's got that fiery streak in him we've seen it a few times and, and it'll be a three game ban now probably it's violent conduct I think that's a, a three game ban so. get, the price tag again he's just gone up another 10 mil can't wait for the 8th bid um, Cole get, let's have your two pence on it what did you make of it yeah like myself and Sam spoke about that I, I echo everything he said and Matt as well like at the end of the day, the ref had no other decision. But on the same, in the same breath, had he have not sent him off, I don't think that VIL would have overturned that decision. So, so if it's a yellow card, it's not an obvious error in your opinion. No, I just think, you know, the fact that I don't think he had any other option than to send him off. Fabian Shaw should have known better. Essentially, he's just he, he's fallen for it. So, Emil Kraft came on. Jacob Murphy was the one with sacrifice, and Newcastle ended up being a four-three-two. The midfield stayed as they were. Some people were saying, does it become a four-four-one? These leave Isak up top. But we'll talk about maybe why Eddie Howe decided to go with that later on in the last word. But Lee, it was just a case of just sit back and defend for the rest of the game. You know, let's just see how we can get on. The fans were certainly energised even more. They felt like it was, you know, us against the world. But it took a mistake from Alex McCarthy to give Newcastle the imperative or the chance to get the goal. And it was Joe Linton, you know, really poor from Alex McCarthy. He's like, not has, he's not, he's the worst in the league, in my opinion. I know that's not difficult to say. Isa gets the ball from that mistake, lays it on a plate to Joe Linton. I know we've seen him miss those chances, but he makes it 1-0 and by God, we needed that lead. Yeah, he took it really calmly, really nice and easy and side foot in the corner. And even just before that, it kind of galvanised the crowd, that red card, because the atmosphere just went up a notch and it was like booing and hissing. And I haven't ref seen it that hostile for a while. It's been hostile, but that was like... Do you not think that kind of like galvanised? Yeah. yeah. What a noise. It galvanised what I thought, it, because... You never know, you never know 11 against 11, uh, but in one sense it kind of went our way because the crowd was for the, for the players and you've seen a couple of them doing this, even Nick Pope was getting amongst yeah, it, was, yeah. Nick Pope was doing it, I was like, bloody hell, that's not like him. Obviously we took the, he took the goal and it's just relief for, because when you 1-0 up with 10 men, as I say, the world's against you, right, now we can park the bus. I would have been more than happy if Eddie Howe said, right, shut up shop now. Would you have taken a point, Sam, at 0-0 um, when you're down to 10 men? No, because that's what I said. Because there's fight in this team, and we saw it big time today. That midfield three of Sean Longstaff, of Bruno, of Joe Linton, oh, didn't didn't do anything. It was just completely anti-Brazilian, really. No flair. No, no. They did the dirty work. They got stuck in, down and dirty, and it was beautiful to watch. They they helped the defence. Kraft was superb when he came on. Lewis Hall did struggle, I thought today. Uh, Lloyd Kelly did very well when he came on. Um, Southampton were dominating out wide they've got some very tricky uh, customers in their wide positions but on the whole we got we dug it out and did it the dirty way and it was great because everyone everyone was so hyped up the players on the pitch would be knackered the coaching staff you will never see them all so animated as you were in that well, 90 minutes Jacob Murphy on the bench never sat down and um, yeah the crowd as well just touch upon and missed upon it before Joe Linton had to get calmed down when that red card happened. Well, he's got, got a mic on. Have you got a new one? Yeah, got, got two mates. What in a six? Yeah. Fancy. Uh, you see, you see. YouTube money again, you, is it? You fell for that. Oh, yeah. Johnny's fell for a couple YouTube of times. YouTube money. <laughs> That's what pre season sort of make these make yeah. these sort of mistakes. But what are you going to say? What are you going to add on that? Like? I was just basically saying, I forgot to mention because Joe Linton had to get calmed down because he was like, right, well, you, come on, man. Do you want to like that one? He was like, right, I'm going to fight his all. Come on, I'll take his on like gladiator. So you get a calm down for that as well, so I think that goal helped him. Yeah. Matt, was it a case, obviously Sam was talking about the midfield, how important it was. We talk about the Brazilian fire, but did we, did we just actually have three Sean Longstaffs in the middle of midfield because the amount of energy, the amount of running, they, they didn't, like Bruno barely had much time on the ball. Joe Linton didn't have a chance to kind of really run with the ball. It was, was it effectively three Sean Longstaffs for that midfield today? I think, yeah, you're right, but I think each individual played to the best of their ability. Obviously with Bruno, he's best with the ball at his feet, spraying passes around, but 
the side swim that I like the most is the winning the fouls in the 90th minute. You know, sucking the crowd in, conning the ref a little bit. You know, there's a couple that weren't fouls that Pope he got away went with. down as well, yeah, didn't he? Oh, yeah. The shit eyes he was back. What did I do? Yeah, do you yeah. say? Well, that's what got us champions. That's, what we, that's you know? what we missed last yeah. season. It's it's gamesmanship. It's it's knowing the game, and and I have to say, you know, I've shown long stuff. Had his critics. I've been one of them. He was absolutely outstanding today. So were Joe Linton and Bruno. I don't think there was a player on that pitch, bar Fabian Cher, that was below an eight out of ten for me. I think everyone was outstanding. Yeah, absolutely superb. Look, second half stars. That was just a really quiet first half. I think I'm sure you can imagine second half. It was against back against the walls. So that's really what it was. Even even like Isaac's worked his absolute bollocks off today, and he's had no sniff of goal whatsoever the entire night. If I said that to you before the game kicked off today. What would you said? What? That he's like wouldn't have really had a chance on goal. He didn't really look like he wouldn't have got well, involved going no, forward. Well, no, because you know, I told you before the game. I, I said I didn't think this was an easy game. I didn't buy into this. Oh, it's going to be three, four, five today. I thought it was going to be a tough game, and it was. So I didn't expect it to be quite that it's, tough. It's easy to with, say that with, with, uh, hard, with, with ten men, but um, yeah, e- even before even before the red, Southampton were coming yeah. were coming into the game nicely. We dominated the first ten minutes, but after that, they came into the game. We were on the back foot at times. They did dominate the whole game uh, in the wide areas, but um, it doesn't matter. We uh, we scored, they didn't, and um, Craig Porson will be in the championship next week. Don't worry, we'll mention him in the second half of this last win. Um, yeah, definitely. Carl, like the second half, it was you know back against the walls, uh, back against the wall rather. And again, it was a case of Southampton just attacking, attacking. It was literally attack v defence like you do in training every single week. The one thing I would say is that I only think Nick Post had to make one save that I'd go good save in terms of I it's a bit 50-50 whether you should save and that's Adam Armstrong the former Newcastle on the edge of the box it's a fantastic save but the rest I expect Nick Pope to save that but the Armstrong one in particular was a great save absolutely it was a great save and I, um, I agree there wasn't much they were very threatening coming forward but they didn't have much uh, final product in terms of shots on goal so in that kind of Respect. I don't wasn't too worried, but that's a testament to like Sam said, the the midfield three coming back, and then the lads at the back blocking everything, putting bodies on the line. Emil Kraft clearing one off the line, who I thought was absolutely outstanding today when he came on. Fair play to him. I mean, I don't know who said that. Um, uh, who, who was a uh, was it yourself and Sam that had the debate previously about who was the better? better Shh, one? Don't say that. Well, yeah. Um, <laughs> But no, it was uh, it was the only way we could see the game out. And I said on the previous video, it was um, the perfect game in the circumstances that we had. So you know, we'll always get on Andy Howe's back and other managers if if that doesn't go the right way because we hate sitting back. But we had to today, and lads did very very well. So. Lee, how important was that Lloyd Kelly substitution? I know Harvey Barnes came off Anthony Gordon, but how important was that Lloyd Kelly substitution? Because Hall was on a yellow card early doors, and you know. The right Hall, I thought, I thought, at the right time. They were, but I thought I thought Hall did okay. I don't think he was that bad or that good. I think he was all right. I think was, was he the one who blocked off the line? Yeah, and that was an unbelievable chance. I think it's a really good thing you should mention that because well, tell, tell us about it. Because I remember it was blocked. It was like a, it was it was in, it was in, and he slides and clears off the line. I think it comes to the to the pantomime villain who plays it over the ball. Which well, it was blocked. I think it might have been Liver Mentor. Deflected or maybe. we haven't seen it back, but. Those substitutions were spot on because Gordon wasn't himself today. He wasn't his full fit. He wasn't going in full in with challenges. He looked absolutely knackered. There's, you can obviously, I don't know if you're picking up the booze up there, but Ben Berrettin's Yeah, he's getting there. He's getting booze. Craig Paulson, Ben Berrettin, Diaz, take your pick. And I think at that time, Hall was starting to look not shaky, but in possess. I think he did a back heel at one stage. Like, what are you doing? Yeah. What are you doing? So I thought those two subs were absolutely spot on. I would have probably even made Willa come on in the last 10 minutes but you know small things very small things but at the end of the day Newcastle get all three points we'll have to talk about the referee and then we'll talk about <laughs> if we have to Matt look he's an experienced referee he's refereed the derby between Newcastle and Sun didn't give these like a penalty which I still don't know how that wasn't given back in, the, back in January that was very very inexperienced referee and I think Again, it nearly cost Newcastle today. Yeah, I mean, like I say, I think the red card was the the correct decision. I think pretty much everything else was wrong. There was a lot of bookings that were soft at best, like Lewis Hall's early, early in the first half. Minimal contact. The linesman didn't even flag for a foul, so I don't know where he's got a yellow card from. Um, And it's it's just silly decision. And obviously we're biased being Newcastle fans, but everything seemed to be going against us, whether it was um, having the ball in the right spot, whether it was a free kick or taking a throw in from five yards further back. He was dead picky with us, but not with them. And it was it was a strange, strange refereeing performance. But 
you've come away with the three points, so despite it all, yeah, you come away with it. Yeah. Sam, 10 beat 12. Yeah, definitely Sam. 4-3-2. Um, was that the right decision, or do you feel like maybe 4-4-1 it might have helped us out a little bit? Maybe, maybe I don't know, not necessarily match that happened because they were, obviously had the three centre-halves and the two wing-backs, but was that the right decision by Eddie Howe for the 60, 70 minutes that we're down to 10 men with? Yes, because it worked out nicely, didn't it? I think he wanted to keep that block of three in there, and, and it, you know, they, they were each outstanding. The alternative was what? Take, a, take long staff off and then play a 4-4-1. Um, no, I, I think I was quite comfortable with the change he made. Um, I did see quite early on after the change, though, he did send Almer on um, to warm up. This was still in the first half, so maybe he was just second-guessing himself a little bit. Um, there was an argue, arguably a, a point to maybe bring Almer on instead of Barnes, just because when you're struggling with that press with 10 men, a headless chicken you know, might do some good. Um, but uh, um, it's harsh calling Miggy a uh, headless chicken. Yes, of course it is. Um, it was an easy joke, and I apologise. Um, I have. Um, but yeah, at the end of the day, how got it spot on today? I thought. Um, I thought the change changes came at the right time, um, and yeah, it all worked out happily ever after. Um, thankfully, because for a long time it didn't look like uh, it was going to be so positive today. Yeah, it was nearly a nightmare. Never mind a fairy tale. Um, yeah, the castle hold on and goal three points and that's all that matters Eddie Howe will be probably breathing a huge sigh of relief like Fabian Scher is probably right now but, but here, is, here are his thoughts right now yeah very difficult game <clears throat> as we knew it was going to be beforehand um, we're playing against a very good team having watched them all of pre-season as you do when you're preparing for your first opponent there was no surprise how good they were with the ball there was no surprise on their style and I thought it was early stages of the game was quite even I thought we were having joy they um, playing their way and a really interesting tussle and of course the sending off changes the game totally um, but most importantly I think for us it brought the crowd into the game and, and it made the atmosphere absolutely hostile and uh, they supported us to the hill and I think that made the difference. I think it was harsh on Fabian but I, I think you don't want to see players come together with their heads. Um, I, don't, I don't think contact's clear, um, I think it's really minimal but um, it's something we learn from. You could call it gamesmanship, you could call it whatever you want to call it, but I think just we don't want to put ourselves in that position where we're leaving ourselves vulnerable to those situations. That's something we've, we'll learn from. Our discipline record, I think, has been very good over a long period of time, so that's certainly something we don't want to creep into our game. And we're back. Um, <laughs> no, no, do you know what you should have done? Thanks, Eddie. <laughs> By the way, I'm leaving this in now. Yeah, no, that's fine. <laughs> and we're back. Hello, mate. <laughs> Man of the match, and then we'll talk about transfers. Joe Litton. Why Joe Litton above everybody? Oh. Do you know what it is? I don't often, there you go, Matt's got up the back of his stuff. <laughs> I don't often say I'm proud to come, I should say it more often, that I'm proud to come away from a match. But he, he was the Geordie on this today. He was like everywhere. He was a warrior. I was like, I'm, I am Sparta. I will take you on. I'll take his all down. Took his goal well. That helped, don't get me wrong. But man, was he possessed. The man possessed today. He was absolutely sensational I'm going 10 out of 10 for Joe Litton that was just the perfect way to start knock on the door to Brazil little reminder you know I'm here you've got my colleague next to me what a sensational performance but also I know there's one or two other people that want to give their shout out again Sean Longstaff he's graft off the off the ball because he was just constantly running where even Gordon stopped running Isaac at some stage stopped running Sean Longstaff didn't and because of his graft he massively helped towards get three points today. Where do you uh, sit on this, Carl? Is Sean Longstaff, your man of the match, is Joe Linton, your man of the match, is it somebody else, is it somebody from the defence? Uh, it's close between Joe Linton and Bruno, because Joe Linton's got the goal, I think he edges it, to be fair, I agree. Like, he was an absolute warrior today, as was Bruno, you know, putting himself at everything, winning every tackle, managing the game very, very well. He did a very, although he might not be the best to try and calm people down. He managed the game excellently today, um, especially towards the end of the game when come down to game management in terms of time. He was fantastic, but um, yeah, Joe Linton, to come back first game this season, put in that sort of performance when we got our backs against the wall was fantastic. Yeah, certainly. I can only echo really what uh, Carl is saying. I, I, I'm going to throw the defence to you, Sam and Matt. I'll start with you, Sam. Look, Joe Linton gets the goal, Bruno and, jo and Sean Longstaff, the, the, the three of them were really well. But the defence after Fabian Scher is sent off. I know we've talked a little bit about Lewis Hall, but to a man, whether that be Lewis Hall, Lloyd Kelly, 
the two centre halves, Team Livermento, I thought was Kraft. outstanding. Kraft was I, 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 I thought Kraft was man of the match, and that's what I was going to come up to. I thought Emil Kraft. Dan Byrne and Emil Kraft are very similar in the sense that they read the, the game pretty well when it comes to defending. Their first, the first point of action is defend, 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 and I thought they read the, the game really, really well. But Emil Kraft for me, coming in cold, watching the first half an hour, Sam. That was a hell of a performance. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong, Joe Linton just uh, gets the nod for me. But yeah, Kraft, a very honourable second, a, a fantastic hour from him. Really, really good. We, in our old days of arguing Kraft v Mankio, like Mankio had the versatility to go left or right and maybe push forward. Kraft now has that versatility of playing a centre back. He's more of a centre back than a right back. I've these always, days. I've always said that Kraft's a better centre half than Mankio, though. Well, absolutely, <laughs> and, and, and that proved, proved. Yeah, I don't like Kraft at right back anymore. Um, <laughs> He's a very capable deputy for <laughs> yeah. centre half, as we saw. Yeah, he was absolutely superb alongside Byrne, really well. Kelly did fantastic when he came on. We've got a. Um, I know we've said Lewis Hall's had a bit of a bad game today, but look, he's still a kid. He's still so so young, so they'll he'll come again, no problem at all. Um, but yeah, fantastic and and so great to have Nick Pope back in goal. So great to have Joe Linton back in that midfield, and uh, you know those kind of little little gains that we had today all added up to, to three points which didn't look likely no it certainly didn't Matt in terms of that defence are we missing something are we missing like I don't know a man from Crystal Palace who's worth about I don't know 70, 80, 90 100 million pounds depending on who you believe at this moment in time are we missing a centre half like that or can Emil, is Emil Kraft good enough is another centre half good enough Joe Gomez hasn't been mentioned for Liverpool is he on his way to Newcastle no. what do we why what is so good about this defence when it's up against decisions like that from the referee and how can it be even more improved does Mark Gay just have to come in now I think I mean obviously I'd love to see Mark Gay in a black and white shirt I think five bids is taking the mick a little bit um, you know you should have got your man by this point if it's not move on um, but I think what we've seen from today is there's a lot of spirit there's a lot of heart in that defence and they fight for each other they fight for the shirt they fight for the fans uh, whether that be the starting 11 or the players like Kraft that can come off the bench cold like you say I have to admit old habits die hard I sighed when I saw Kraft coming on and it was I know you'd have two left-sided defenders if you brought Kelly on at centre-half but a fantastic decision ready he trusts Kraft and he's shown time and time again at that right back the right centre-half slot that he can come in and do a job is he a started starting 11 caliber player probably not he will be for the next game I imagine but I still want to see a centre-half come in it's probably not going to be gay here at this point I have to say whether it's Joe Gomez I know a lot of fans won't be happy with that I'll be all right with that as long as we're not paying over the odds um, but I think we do need reinforcements because we do need that first team player if Fabian Shah is going to be suspended, injured or out the door, you know. Certainly. Um, Lee, just before we talk a little bit more about transfers and X, Y and Z, it's the big thing for me that Paul Mitchell's first assignment is to get a centre-half of the line and to get a right winger of the line and we're messing around with four bits, whether that is true, whether it's definitely four bits or Newcastle saying actually that we're just having negotiations. Whatever's getting put out there or being leaked by the Crystal Palace end or the Newcastle end, it doesn't look good on him, does it? Well, it's getting leaked by, obviously, Palace end because Eddie Howe's kept very quiet on it. But, you know, there's a place, that right centre-back role for the next three games, you know, unless I don't think uh, Eddie Howe will play um, Lloyd Kelly because it probably unbalances us so Kraft might start, but clear his signs, he comes straight in, doesn't he? But it's how much you want to go, what is the limit? I what's, what's the limit with Gay? I think 70, I think you can't go anymore. I think you've got to look at it think no more. Because Chelsea are going to get, what, up to 20%. So it's how much you want to go, otherwise you start looking elsewhere. Because there is cheaper, obviously, targets that are out there. Even cheaper English targets as well. So it might drag on till midweek. Hopefully it is done by next weekend. But we'll have to wait and see. Obviously there is the transfer window clo closing down. But... Paul, I've said this before and I came across as negative going on the overlap. Eddie Howe hasn't been back fully yet in this transfer window. And that may come across as negative, but I'm speaking facts. You look at the signings, the transfer window shuts now. You look at that window and think, that's poor. He needs back, he needs a centre-back that he wants. He needs the right winger. Go and get them. Got to go and do his job. Is it, I know it's underwhelming in terms of the transfer business right now, but is it getting to a stage now where Newcastle walk away from Gay if they put in one more offer in it at the very most? or they move on to another target because they need something to materialise by the end of this week because the week after is a manic week you've got Spurs and then the window shuts it's getting to that stage now where it's just enough is enough yeah absolutely I've, I've been one of those people that's saying that we need to walk away but then I had a sit down spoke to Sam spoke to a few people thought about it and I've said the problem we've got now is that 
everybody knows that we're willing to spend 65, 70 million pound on a centre half. So you want to go and get someone like Chiloba from Chelsea. He might have been what thirty million two weeks ago. He's probably fifty now. So at my point, I, I'm just just get gay over the line, genuine. Because I think anyone else that you go after now, like everyone's going to start putting the price up because they know what's available in terms of funds. I just think you've got to get it done. And if it is seventy million pounds, seventy five million pounds at this point, just pay it. Unless just, there's a release clause somewhere yeah. that someone's got that. We'll see what happens. Just get it done, says Carl. But I'll tell you what, we did get done. We got three points, and that is certainly the biggest thing from today. Joe Litton gets a goal, we get a clean sheet, we join top of the league. <laughs> but yeah, good day all round. Yeah, they will be at Bournemouth next Sunday, two o'clock kickoff, so make sure you watch all the vids for that, all the reaction. Fly down. He is flying down, he is Fly flying down. down, not driving down. down. Sam and I will have Mark Douglas on Monday night for the Greenman and Milner show. He'll give us all the latest on Mark Gay, other centre halves, and the Southampton game. So, not much to talk about, really, but give it a watch more, <laughs> nonetheless. Like and subscribe to Newcastle Fans TV, and we'll see you all very soon. <laughs>